Chicago Bulls starting lineup. Tony Kukoc will start for Ron Harper, who will not start because of a store left knee, but although he will be available. Now, in game two, Michael Jordan and Gary Payton finally got together for a little on-court conversation. Now, while it was very animated, Michael told me he was still friendly. He said he was welcoming Gary to his home and reminding him that they had no chance of winning there in his house. Now, Gary reciprocated by saying, well, on Sunday, you got to come to our place and things will change. Now, Michael told me that he doesn't like having these kind of conversations on the court. He'd rather let his playing do his talking, and he feels like he struggled the first two games, and now it's time to have one of those statement games. Ball. So the Sonics to the offense for the first time, and it is Jordan guarding Peyton. Its last 12 shots. That figure dating back to game number two. Well, Michael Jordan had a little chat with Tony Kukoc during the course of game two and uh, felt that here is Jordan for three. The Bulls continue their terrific ball movement, and I like the fact that Michael Jordan is guarding Gary Payton here. He is not going to let Gary Payton get off. Well, Payton does <laughs> get it off and hit. What are you saying, Bill? And in your face, Walton. You're next. <laughs> Prior to tonight's game, they're all concerned about the energy lift that this crowd would provide Seattle. Well, they took care of that with the fast start. Well, Chicago looked sluggish and slow of foot in game two. Much, much quicker here to start game three. Sam Perkins getting set to come on. Early substitution. George Carl not giving anybody a chance to play as Jordan will drain this three. You can just see, as Ahmad was pointing out, the focus, the determination, and the fact that he's guarding Gary Payton. Go in, Seattle over three from behind the line, continuing a disturbing trend as Jordan making that statement game going at who's ever guarded him. Well, whatever the Bulls did yesterday at practice or what they talked about today, they are moving their bodies and moving the ball. The offense is crisp. George with a beautiful move. He's hit two of three. And the Bulls are up 15 for another bad pass. The sloppy play by Seattle continues. To go with Tony Kukoc as the starter because of the knee problem suffered by Rod Harper and Kukoc has come out on fire. Three of four, seven points. 18 for Chicago lead. Shrimp for three. Did not hit the rim. Very poor offensive execution. Now Chicago 19 and Seattle four. Percy Hawkins trying to put the move. Tony Kukoc, Sean Kemp, and the Sonics are now rushing shots. Over five times. The Sonics try to break. Payton got the roll, and it's the ball. Now the Chicago Bulls respect the defense of Seattle. I think that's why they came out. They knew they would be tough in this building. That's why they had come out. They spaced the floor beautifully and passing the ball and making their shots do it too. The steal by Jordan leading to the breakaway by Pippen. Oh, the Bulls are just eating up the Sonics in this opening quarter with a minute 35 remaining. Michael Jordan hits the three-point shot. And then comes right back on the defensive end on the advancement of S Seattle's offensive possession. The look-away pass and Scotty off to the races. And you have to wonder if Chicago was just toying with Seattle back in the Windy City. Carl was telling us on Showtime that uh, he thinks it's mental, not physical. It may be a bit of both here in the... Uh, in the first half. Now the Bulls have brought their A game in that first quarter. And it's now Chicago 34 and Seattle 18. Well, it's the matchup that you have wanted so far in this series. Peyton and Jordan finally matched up. And that was the first turnover committed by, by the Bulls. Foul by the Weddington. I just don't understand why Seattle waits for game three to get it going. Or until you get behind by 16. Absolutely. Peyton, Askew, Hawkins, Perkins, and Kemp on the floor 
for George Carl. Here's Peyton for three. They cannot hit the three-point shot. And right away now, Michael Bitton realized that he is being defended by Peyton. He is just going to run to the low blocks on either side and try to be the post man in this triangle offense and try to get inside as much as possible. Not that Peyton is much smaller, but Jordan certainly stronger than Gary Peyton inside. And you recall they got involved in a heated exchange during the fourth quarter on Friday night. Jordan said it was just conversation. He said he can't get in my head. I'm uh, pretty sure he's not going to let me get in his head. Jordan said to this point, that is a standoff. Watching Jordan and getting in his in up close to his face and seeing the defense on his team. Well, the Bulls have led by as many as 22. Peyton with the back end move on Randy Brown, who just came on following the timeout. Jackson, though, to get Brown in there to watch Peyton for a while. I think he sensed that Michael Jordan is trying to do too many different things once Michael will settle down a little bit. Peyton lost his balance. Peyton. off the bench like Kerr and Bushler. They make so much of the Chicago bench, but really, these are all guys who nobody really wanted. As does Askew, Kemp averaging over 30 points a game in the series. He's got two points this afternoon. Seattle had only 10 assists in the game on Friday night. Peyton, Peyton able to chase it down. Trap eluding Bushler, who just came to points. Bulls lead by 16. Trap for three. And Rodman with the rebound. So the Sonics, all for the last 15 from three-point range. Jordan got caught. Oh, Michael Jordan with a couple of miscues here in the first half. Oh, nice pass from Peyton. That left front. So Sally was lonely. And Kuko jumped front to the New York in the backcourt. 16 point Chicago lead. Again, it's Peyton on Jordan. Sally played by Kemp. Jordan. Yes. Nicely done on the setup from Kukos. Mark, they just keep moving all the time. When one guy has the ball, they're not standing watching. It's the Bulls 60, the Sonics 38. And Matt, don't encourage him. The last guy that did that, he wouldn't play baseball for a while. Hit with one earlier. Now a half minute left in this opening half. Aiden wanted to use the pick, but uh, Perkins was moving with him. Here's Wingate. Goal, Chicago 5 of 8, Seattle in the midst of a drought right throughout the series from three-point territory. 0 for 8 tonight, and Peyton just eight points in the first half. Michael was telling us before the game about how he was lecturing Luke about when you get popped in the eye like that, take those five stitches. you got to come out and show them that you're not going to allow that to happen anymore. Well, Michael Jordan with that, what has now become the patented get up in the air fadeaway shot, just kept fading all the way back and all over our NBC cameraman. Here, Dennis Rodman and Brakowski getting all tangled up. And Dennis with a flop there, just taking the little bump from Brakowski. I don't know, a forearm to the throat. If you can get somebody involved, do it. Sean Kemp, you have to start getting physically involved in this ball game. 7-0 run by the Sonics. Bulls have led by as many as 26. Prep. And here's a fadeaway jumper by Rodman. a three-second violation call on Sean Kemp in this series. Well, the Bulls have not scored in four and a half minutes. They've been outscored here in the third, seven to two. 
Kemp had it excellently knocked away by Payton. Able to recover. And hit. They're in danger of losing this entire lead. All right, Pippen with the rebound on the Shrimp miss. The Bulls team that has got two of 13 from the field. They've been outscored 14 to 4 here in the third, which has usually been their quarter. That's the case in games one and two. Perkins trying to dump it off. You got to start all over again. Down to 40 seconds remaining in the third. Hawkins got the step. Woodgate. And he's called for travel. 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Down to five. UCLA plays, Bill. The UCLA <laughs> cut, and Michael Jordan able to shed David Wingate and get that open jump shot. And that play was all over the black ball. Everything. This points out the, the, you know, the problem that Ron Harper not being available today, just not the regular rotations to keep Kukoc in the back, in the front court. But obviously, uh, the Bulls have managed <laughs> despite that. <laughs> Here's Payton. Gary Payton with 12 points. Is playing today. I, I'd go with him and make Seattle match up to him, which they have not done. Well, long and a knee offered up by uh, Longley. Recount the game with highlights. We'll hear from some of the players. You'll see some of the press conferences as we look back at the game three here in Seattle. Seven games back in 91 92 to the NBA Finals. I think he likes Michael Jordan, not so much the <laughs> arena. Longley called for that tripping foul that put Gary Payton coming in as a brilliant player over 20 points a game. In the series, he's got 40 points total in the series. That's the story tonight, Jordan 11 22. We'll send it out the rest of the way. That's the uh, final numbers. 11 of 23, 36 points. And he was 11 for 11 at the line. Foul committed by Randy Brown. To Michael Jordan, his high game in this series. And uh, certainly feeling much better about things. He was very unhappy, very frustrated, but about the way he played and about the way the club played, although they beat the Sonics in game two. And I'm sure it made him feel good and helped the whole ball club by getting after Tony Kukoc about those couple of times where he passed up some shots and jumping on Luke Longley about maybe feeling sorry for himself with those five pitches. And I think that definitely picked up those two players, and I think it woke the rest of the ball club up as well.